and I'm calling the Regional School Committee to order and note for being recorded. Thank you, CCTV. I request that the chair of the Concord School Committee call for the seating of the Concord Carlisle School Committee and for the election of officers for the Concord Carlisle School Committee. Other appointments can be made at that time if the committees have worked out assignments. The appointments that require a vote, in addition to the chair and vice chair of the school committee, are the appointment of the treasurer and assistant treasurer for the region. Okay, so we'll do the seating of the Concord Carlisle School Committee members. Motion uh, for, please, for uh, that will need to be made um, to recognize Joanna Boynton, Wallace Johnson, Heather Bell, Robert Brown, and Court Booth as Concord members in their stores, and Christine Lear as Carlisle members. Concord Carlisle School Committee. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Thank you and welcome. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Good. Welcome, Christine. Thank Very you. Glad you. Glad you. Well, yes. Thank you. Um, and now we will move to the election of the officers of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. Nominations will be accepted on and voted on for the chair of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. So I'll take a motion for any. I would like to move to nominate Robert Grom as chair of the Concord Carlisle School Committee. Second. Any other nominations? Any comments? I'll just comment quickly that Bob has been vice chair, obviously, for the past year. I feel like he's done a great job and obviously has taken over for the past few weeks um, in Dan's absence. And I feel like we're already in good hands and full confidence in him. Any others? I will echo that. And likewise, I say, uh, thinking as Bob as chair, he's very, very organized and thorough, and um, I think he's geared up to do an excellent job. I appreciate all the work that the committee should be voted into. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let's see how this goes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Congratulations, Bob. Thank, Thank you very much. I appreciate Bob. I'll let you take over. Okay, and so now we uh, are looking for. Write down this list. Oh, you have. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I thought you didn't have it. As we. Like I said, it's rather organized. for a motion to elect the vice chair of the Concord College School Committee. Uh, so I move to nominate Mary Storrs as vice chair of the Concord Carlisle School Committee, please. Second. Sure. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Oh, I was just going to say one thing. Well, so. as, a, as a long standing uh, member of both committees in Carlisle and on this region, and um, having done years of work and doing the um, work of the calendar committee, this policy subcommittee, the campus advisory committees, um, <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's obviously put in a tremendous amount of time in an earnest and committed and dedicated way. And, uh, I think we're most appreciative of all the work you do, especially behind the scenes outside of this meeting and uh, really appreciate that you're still here and you help guide us along the way. Thank you. I can only second what uh, Joanna said. I've gotten to know um, Mary pretty well in our 10 or 12 meetings for the Campus Advisory Committee and many more meetings in the Policy Subcommittee. And so uh, I think she adds uh, a, a very important um, factor and an approach to uh, policy writing and her critical thinking in terms of organizing um, subcommittees, etc., is much appreciated. She was very helpful to me in writing and finalizing the charge for the Campus Advisory Committee about nine months to a year ago. So uh, very much looking forward to working with you and the rest of the crew here, including Walt. <laughs> So now we're looking we for. Oh, okay. So um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Now we're looking for a vote uh, and a motion to appoint Aaron Higgins as recording secretary. So moved. Second. <coughs> Any discussion? Any opposed? 
discussion? I just like to extend an enormous amount of thanks <laughs> yeah. to the number one, the number of hours you spent here, uh, meticulously taking notes and going back over to make sure they're accurate. But I know it takes you away from your family, a lot of other places, and we are so appreciative. And don't take you for granted at all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Eternally grateful. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. And now, yeah, we're looking for a motion to appoint Allison Brake as treasurer of the Ponca Carlisle Regional School District. <coughs> so moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And again, thank you to Allison. Yes. To the network. And now we're going to uh, appointment of committee representatives and liaison. <laughs> and you said what? assistant treasurer? Or, no. Or you said treasurer and assistant treasurer in there? Whatever you. No, this, this oh, the vote? But it's just treasurer, right? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Sorry, I don't want no, to. No, no, no. Well, let's clear it up right at the moment. <coughs> so now appointment um, to committee representatives. Um, first committee, we need to uh, appoint a liaison person to is the Adult and Community Education Committee. and. Uh, I actually sit on that as a member of that board, so I'd be happy to report back to this. Well, that'd be great. Okay. So we'll... I, I move to appoint Christine Lear to the Dalton okay, community. So... And... Oh, do we have to take a vote on these or no? Well, can she serve as both? Can she do both? Can she... Do we have to have an official liaison, or do we rely on Christine to bring information back because she's on the board? And how much longer, oh. what's your term on the board, Christine? Uh... I'm ending my second year of a three year. Of term. three? I think it's okay. I don't know why. What, what's okay? Which I think it's okay for her to be the liaison to our committee as a board member. But I don't think that I, I, I would add she would simply recuse herself if it was a policy recommendation that was sent from that group to this group. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, So we do need motions on all of these. Right? That's the way it looks, yeah. Okay. So I would move to appoint Christine Lear as Compton Carlisle representative to adult and community education. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is the uh, appointment to the Board of Directors of Petco. And uh, I'd like to hear a motion. We we'll move to appoint Dr. Lori Hunter as representative of the EDCO Board of Directors. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Also, we're looking for a motion to appoint uh, Joanna Boynton as Concord Carlisle School Committee representative to the EDCO Advisory Board. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is uh, oh, us. You hit anybody else? Aye. 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 <laughs> it's not on my list, did I? Yeah, no, no. it goes to the second page. Yeah, turn the page. It's the, oh, the, the blank on the oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Oh. sorry. Oh. sorry. The organization link has oh, this, the link has this list. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Next, no. next is the CCTV advisory board. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's oh, no, finance the finance. Oh, the FICOM. Oh, why wouldn't we skip that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I hear, hear a motion to appoint uh, Robert Grom as School Committee Observer of the Concord Finance Committee? If you're willing again, I yes. <laughs> move that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I did I did say I would be a wingman for okay. helping when you can't. And I mean, if you guys can't, I can show up. Yeah. Just as a general policy, some of the committees we're going to have uh, back up individuals uh, and to make sure that we have a person at each one of the you know yep. several committees that we really need to be at um, so now we're going to uh, number four cctv advisory board oh just uh, a correction on that this is a uh, seat a non-voting seat on their board of directors called for by their bylaws mm -hmm. implicitly recognized by the contract with carlisle and contract with Congress. So you're saying it's, it's not, not the CCTV not advisory, advisory it's board, it's the CCTV board. board of directors. Okay. But we send a non-voting representative. Correct. So 
That's two um, different positions? So that's two. No. Well, no, it's just one. one. Number it's four, just correcting. CCTV board of directors. You should say board of directors. Right, instead of advisory board. Advisory board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I have done this in the past, but given that Cork is now with us and has so much experience, I would move to appoint Cork Booth as the school committee representative to the CCTV board of directors. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Take a breath of it. <laughs> 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 Trying to move this along. Anyway. Uh, Efficiency. Pay advisory board is next. Uh, can you hear a motion? I, I would also appoint Court Booth as school committee representative to the Peg advisory board because of his expertise in the area. Is that a motion? That's a motion. I would move to appoint him. I'll second if someone tells me what Peg is. No. <laughs> uh, Peg is the uh, uh, public education and government cable access television, which is now more than access television, it's internet streaming and so on, okay. uh, comes to us through the two town governments and their PEG access. This advisory board is new, newly established by the Congress Select Board to try to work out some of the uh, relationships between the two town governments and the nonprofit corporation. And I should add that I'm a non-voting um, member of that board as well. So I can back court. Perfect. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving to the policy subcommittee, I would like to hear a motion to appoint Mary Stores and Court Booth to the policy subcommittee. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Great, thanks for doing that one. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now we're moving on to the uh, Congress of Board Meeting Observer. Uh, can I have a motion to appoint um, Bob Crom, Robert Crom, <laughs> <laughs> the one and only, to the uh, School I'm Committee sorry. Observer for the cycle? It's easier for Aaron if we keep it up. Uh, yes, so moved. <laughs> As, Second. As, um, as long as you're willing to do that also, Bob, is that, that's not too much of a load if you're doing that in the primary for the thing. We'll have a backup, and again, I'll share okay. the response. All right, so let us know if you need fun. someone to step in. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is, uh, I'd like to hear a motion to appoint uh, Wally Johnson as the school committee observer to CC at play. So moved. Second. Discussion? Um, we had two, haven't we? Yeah, but it was Bill and Wally for a while. Hmm. Last year was and, just Dan, as far as I remember. And it was, was and it wasn't and there's Bill less, and Dan? There's less, I think, to well, do with How much, yeah. what's left? <coughs> yeah, that's how much, how much? I mean, there, there's a couple money. of things left, as we may hear later I'm on. I'm going to with John tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is the Youth Advisory Council. I'd like to appoint, uh, uh, excuse me, I'd like to move to appoint uh, Heather to the uh, Youth Advisory Council. So moved. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next is the Financial Audit Advisory Committee. Uh, I'm looking for a motion to appoint Wally Johnston to the Financial Audit Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. And this is the Concord Financial Concord. Audit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just to be clear. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to appoint Wally Johnston to the Comprehensive Long Range Plan. Oh, we have to skip the League of Women Voters. Oh, education. okay. Oh my God, that's not your fault. Oh, I'm sorry. It's on the, the links one, yeah. Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to appoint um, Heather Bout to the League of Women Voters Education Committee. So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Now the Comprehensive Long Range Plan Committee. I'm looking for a motion to appoint Wally Johnson to the Comprehensive Long Range Plan Committee. So moved. 
Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next is CPAC, Special Education Parent Advisory Council. I'm looking for a motion to appoint Christine. Sure. To the Special Education Parent Advisory Council. So moved. Second. Discussion? I would just comment that um, in the past, what we did last year, Melissa was the representative, but given that some things are, are Concord related, I was kind of a second or backup or, or joint with her. So I'm happy to do that again if that makes sense. And then there are two of us to get time. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And now we have the Carlisle Board of Selectmen, Finance Observer. I'm looking for a, a motion to appoint. You guys know who goes. Oh, you were on a roll. <laughs> 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 I can choose a name, but I don't think I know. Um, Sorry, I can't remember. Um, it probably should be. I was going to say it probably should be me, but. Um, well, you have two different ones to do here: board of select and, and finance. Well, did you guys so just have one person do it last time? Yeah. Time? So, so I. Uh, I would like to change this to be rather than observer be liaison. Because we don't it should be a liaison. We don't we don't go regularly to the selectmen at the FinCom meetings, but we communicate with them yeah. as needed. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it would be good practice for Christine. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Boy, she's you really bad. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you okay with that? And, and I'll back you up, or we'll, we'll tag team in the beginning, but we'll make it you officially. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. So, and as you say, it's liaise, not observe. Right. So you're looking for a motion for Christine? Then I would move to appoint Christine Lear as the Board of Selectmen, Carlisle Board, Car Carlisle Board of Selectmen and Finance Committee liaison. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And we have one more, the um, facilities, uh, the CMS Facilities Planning Committee. I'm looking for a motion to appoint uh, Heather Bout and Wally Johnston to the CMS Facilities Planning Committee. So moved. So that should be a conquered. Yeah. Actually, problem. that's true. That so uh, I'll I'll do it in the region. You're right. Yeah. All right. So this is just for Concord. So then I moved that for Concord. And we two point second for Concord. Did you say? What? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I moved to point myself, I guess. <laughs> and Wally. And Wally. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. Is> <laughs> <second? laughs> I know. <laughs> just here to steal the spotlight. Point. That's all. <laughs> discussion. Any discussion? All those in favor for Concord. Aye. Aye. Okay, that concludes uh, the most difficult part of the evening. We have two visitors here tonight that probably would like to make their comments at this point, and we're very much looking forward to it. Uh, two high school students, uh, Jenny Lee and Ariel Walton. Would you like to identify yourself and then give us your I'm Jenny. I'm Ariel. Thanks for coming. We came before, but we're on deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Moving around in the middle is a challenge. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. That's working on it. Oh, your mic. Please speak. They're on. Thank you. 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 Um, both the band and orchestra recently went to the MICA competition at the end of April in Lexington and placed gold. After, they also had a MICA solo ensemble festival, which was hosted at CCHS. The band had their POPs concert this past Friday, May 18th as well. Um, and a lot more went on in C at CC in April, including Hoops for Heart and the Challenge Success group ran a Feel Good Friday as well. Hoops for Heart is an annual fundraiser held at CC, which fundraises for various heart diseases and raises a couple thousand dollars each year. Um, during Hoops for Heart, there are opportunities for students and faculty to donate money and participate in games in the gym in order to win prizes and enter in raffles. On the same day as Hoops for Heart Challenge Success, a group formed from the Challenge Success program in Stanford, California, 
due to Feel Good Friday, and there were activities in the cafeteria and various raffles, including raffles for Red Sox tickets. The Challenge Success program at CC focuses on improving school climate, promoting student well-being, and reducing stress. Um, one of the exciting things that ended about a week ago was a school musical called Guys and Dolls, which was performed May 10th through May 13th. The production and songs were fantastic this year, and many students from all grades took part in the show. And lastly, Q5, a new two-week program at CC, which is implemented to end the year on a fun note, is in two weeks. And students are able to choose electives ranging from tie-dye to paddleboarding to community service projects. And these, these are the classes that they will be having for the last two weeks of school. In general, students are definitely looking forward to Q5. There's also a lot going on with sports. Spring sports have been going on for some time now, and many teams are doing extremely well. For starters, the softball team has been undefeated with a 10-win streak. The girls' varsity tennis team is doing very well also, and has been undefeated except by Athens Boxborough. The girls' tennis team has beat numerous rivals this year, such as Leyland and Nunzo. The track and field team had a very big meet this two weeks ago called the Twilight Meet, which CC did very well in. Track also had a home meet today with five schools competing, and had a bittersweet senior night for all the seniors' last home meet. In high school, students have been very academically busy, especially juniors and seniors, due to AP testing, which finished last week. APs went on for two weeks and ended right before prom. Seniors also have finals coming up and will have their last real day of school on May 24th, which is only in a few days. This is the last full week of school for everyone else. Lastly, one of the biggest events that recently occurred was prom, which was this past Saturday on May 19th and was a huge success at the Danvers Yacht Club. This year, something that the boys at CC started as a joke about prom wear, ended up raising over $8,000 for Rohe's Place, which is a woman's shelter in Boston, landing us an article in the Boston Globe. Overall, CC students and faculty have been very busy and have been partaking in countless activities with, it, with academics and extracurriculars. Wow, that's great. What was that fundraiser yeah. that raised money for Rohe's So, the drinker, like, have, like, a few months before prom, like, starting in January, they started to make slip through and everyone sends their dress in. The boys thought it'd be really funny if they. They do it so that no one has the same dress. Yeah. Right? yeah. So, <laughs> when you buy your dress, you post it so that like it's, it's, it's all okay. it's all limits. Right? Oh my god. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so the guys were like, "Oh, we're gonna make this a joke." So they like made a group and everyone sent in the same picture of a tux. <laughs> they were like, "No one can wear this. I'm wearing this." <laughs> and then they like found the model that was wearing it and contacted him and said, "Can you come to our prom like wearing your tux?" And um. He couldn't come because of like rules about you can't be like 35. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those <laughs> policies! Are <laughs> yeah. what is right. he, did he did he come to school though? For the well, so he day? said that if we raised, I think it was Sorry. like 300 dollars or 500 dollars or something, he would come um, before we knew about the policy. And I think it's closer to 10,000 now. And they, he said you had to choose like a charity that we actually cared about, and it was National Women's Day, so. A kid in our grade named Spencer, who's the president of Gender Equality Club, chose Rosie's Place, which is for like women that are homeless. Right, right. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Was so, oh my gosh, what was the premise to raise the money though? It was so that you would come. Um, no, yeah, but how did they? What was? What, what did you have to do to raise the money? Oh, it was on. Um, it was just set up It was on. It was just donate. So the idea was yeah. to pay for this guy to come, and then GoFundMe said no, no, no. no. And they made it for a good cause. Yeah. So okay. Once you parents like, got raised, money, the money went out and paid the ticket. That is excellent. Yeah. Wow, that's great. That was fun. <laughs> uh, thanks for all the updates. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, you have exams? You have finals? Yeah. yeah. We had a lot of APs together. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to be here to update yeah. us. It's okay, you can leave it, Jenny. <laughs> We're back on Tuesday after this. So next is... I can make a motion. I would move oh, that the Conquering Code of Carlisle School Committee is entering the executive session under Purpose 3 of the Open Meeting Law to discuss strategy with respect to the bargaining. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body, I return to open session at approximately 7 p.m. Second. Second. Uh, for both. Oh, and I moved that for both. And second for both. Second for both. So we'll do a roll call. Boyd and I. Grom I. For both. For both. Stores I. Uh, I for both. Booth I for both. 
Good um, last name. There, there, right? uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, we got it. All right. Good. So call me. Call the Congress School Committee back. We're calling the Regional School Committee back to order. Still being recorded. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, public comments. And we have one person interested, Colin Reed. Carlin Reed, 83 Woods End. I'm a member of the PEG Access Advisory Committee, to whom you just reported Court Booth as your uh, designation. That is a voting position. I just wanted to say thank you very much for making that designation. That brings us to a forum, so we can now have our first meeting of this committee. And uh, Christine Lear is a, an ex officio member for Carlisle, also in that committee. So this school committee will be well represented. And our first meeting will be June 14th at 7 p.m. at the Concord Select Boardroom. Uh, it'll last about an hour and a half, that's what we asked for. So, June 14th, first meeting, thank you very much. In court, Christine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, moving on to a reading of the minutes from uh, April 24th, 18. Uh, I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the April 24th meeting. Second. Any discussion? I mean, I looked them over, I think they were perfect. I she's good. Very good. She is. I'm not going to suggest a change, but I, I would want to emphasize uh, when we were discussing fees, the point I was making was not in, uh, in regard to subsidy per se for a particular user, but rather the, uh, the need on our part to make certain there's never a perception of private profit for public so it was a general statement, not a specific one. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, thanks for the clarification. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is our presentation from uh, CPAC, uh, Carol Yell. Thank you for coming. This is, I guess, the annual report, right? This is. Yeah. <laughs> Switch pages if that's okay. I'll go to the first page. Sorry, go there. Yeah, sorry, I'll start with the first one. Yeah, perfect. All right. Great. Well, thank you. Thank you for having us here tonight. Um, I'm Carol Yao, as mentioned, president of the Concord Public Schools and Concord Carlisle Regional School District Special Education Parent Advisory Council. I'll refer to it as CPAC from here on out. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Um, and I also want to encourage some new members on the committee to take a look at our website when you can. There's a lot of information there, in addition to some reports from previous years to get a little background about CPAC in both the districts. Okay, change the. The mission of the Concord Carlisle Regional School District. BEDPAC, or Special Education Parent Advisory Council, is to provide education and information to parents, caregivers, and the broader community on special education issues and services to establish better understanding of, res of respect for and support of special education and to work with the Concord Public Schools and Concord Carlisle Regional School District to ensure that students' needs are met under Massachusetts special education regulations and that other applicable laws are being met. And this is a report that was attached. I didn't have a chance to look at it. And I want to take a minute and introduce um, our board members. A few are here tonight, but I do want to read through all of our board members and liaisons because they're a really important part of our group. And we do a lot of work together supporting the community. Um, Bettina Stevens is our co chair. Joanne Jensen, our secretary, she's here tonight. If you want to come on up, you can. Lisa <laughs> <laughs> Atkins is our membership chair. Shana Brito, she's here tonight. Come on up if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> Helen McKinley, Publicity Chair. Becky Robichaud, Technology Chair. Tally Dittman Brene is Communications Chair. We also have CPAC liaisons that we've appointed to be um, at each school. That is Casey Atkins at the Concord Integrated Peace School, Ayanna Carey at Alcott, Betsy Olson Makowski at Thoreau, Amy Christian at Willard, 
Concord Middle School. We're looking for somebody. Anybody knows anybody that's open right now? And myself, I work up at the Concord Carlisle High School, and Mary Tambor has been working for Alley District. It's been a really productive academic year for CPAC and its volunteer board. Through inclusive programming, collaboration with the district, and outreach to the community, CPAC strives to extend its mission. We're delighted to share an overview of our activities, broadly organized into two categories, community impact and collaboration. We gratefully acknowledge the goodwill, energy, and positive reciprocity of our concerned parent, caregiver, administrator, and educator communities. Together, we have created something great. That's what? Yeah, okay. That's good. Yep. <laughs> so, um, some community engagement. So we have, um, under the leadership of Shana, who we met a few minutes ago, <laughs> she is our chair for events, and she organized a number of well-attended workshops focused on resource navigation, knowledge, and capacity building. The objective of these workshops is to build community among CPAC members and also the greater community. Some of the workshops we have, well, all the workshops we held, I'm going to go over those briefly, is we had a Q&A session and chat with Dr. Lord Hunter and Jessica Murphy, who's here tonight too, Director of Special Education. Um, we do the session every year to give a little meet and greet coffee and ask questions. We invited Lori this year as a new member of the school district and it was a great session. Um, the Federation of Children with Special Needs presented a basic rights in special education as a workshop for parents and professionals. We held the Science of Reading Difficulties presented by Nancy Duggan, co-founder and executive director of Decoding Dyslexia of Massachusetts. Mirto Flasis from the Bureau of Special Education Appeals presented a workshop on mediation and facilitated team meetings. Um, this is the second time she's come back to do that and we're looking at probably having that every year. It's very well attended and a great um, great way to learn about mediation and what it can do for your, your meetings. We had a panel presentation hosted by Heather Mahoney. Uh, Heather Mahoney is a transition specialist here in the district, if you're not aware of that, and she approached us to hold this meeting. It was on special education transition, guidance, preparation, and development. We had outside outside agencies come in, held a workshop, and parents could talk one-on-one -on -one to find out what things are available um, in transition years. 14 to 22, more of the stuff there was about 16 to 22, but us with the younger kids really had a great, like, oh, okay, I can do it. This was a great meeting. Um, just last week, we had a session by Caroline McGuire, New England Coaching Services, and Caroline McGuire actually is a Concord parent as well. The session with My Child is Trouble with Friendships, and we're looking at doing more sessions with her. And then we've also had a social <coughs> gathering with coffee or a local coffee shop. Parents, caregivers met and provide us support for the community and help to build CPAP. We can change the slide. Thank you. Um, so our outreach, how do we get all these people here and understand who we are? Um, promotion for events is led by Helen McKinley, who oversees multi-channel marketing efforts through social media presence, local newspaper advertising, and school-based electronic distribution lists. Connection and exchange with other area CPACs helps reach a broader audience. Additionally, our communications chair, Tally Dittman Brenier, authored six newsletters. Those can be found on the website that we saw earlier. The newsletter is distributed to parents, caregivers, with students receiving special education services in the district and covers topics of interest to the community. Our social media presence, led by Becky Robichaud, reinforces outreach with a well-trafficked website, Gmail, Google Calendar, Facebook page, and Twitter. Information is shared about district happenings, area workshops, and articles that are of interest to members of our community. And Casey Atkins, our membership chair, she helps work with the li liaisons. The liaisons attend each school's open house to provide partners, to, I'm sorry, to provide parents and caregivers information <coughs> about CPAC and act as a contact for each school. This is an important part of connecting parents and caregivers with their specific schools. One thing at the beginning of this school year we have planned to do is conduct a survey similar to one we did a few years ago. However, we opted out of doing the survey um, due to the West End program review that was initiated by the district. They were kind of overlapping each other and we felt it was just going to be too confusing and too much at the same time. So we're going to talk about having that survey go again next year. Um, district collaborations. We have regular meetings with Jessica, Director of Special Education. Um, pertain, we, we meet pertaining to special education in both Concord Carlisle and Concord. I did that wrong. I spoke that wrong here. So Concord and Concord Carlisle Regional. 
Our conversations are always engaging and provide the CPAC and the district with valuable communication. We also may maintain contact with Jessica if the need arises, if there's something going on that we need to have some help on or vice versa. We, we're in constant contact. CPAC also met with Dr. Lori Hunter last summer and we had a great introduction, just kind of met who are you, who are we, it was, it was a great exchange. The CPAC has representation of PTG meetings and school advisory councils. Participation in these groups provides a close-up look at current events <coughs> in each school as well as information sharing among parent groups. This year we formed a subcommittee to review policies that are up for review. The committee is currently in discussion and we anticipate a recommendation to the superintendent by the academic by the end of the academic year. There was three policies we were looking at. Um, we would like to thank the district for supporting our membership to the Federation of Children with Special Needs. This membership provides a trained speaker for the Federation to come in and deliver the Know Your Rights workshop. Shana Brito attended the Vision of Community Conference this year as part of our membership. It was a great opportunity for education, networking with other CPACs, and planning for future events. So we can change the slide. And now we come to you guys. <laughs> The Joint School Committee presentation. So, Melissa McMarrow was appointed to our school committee liaison last year. And we'd like to thank her for her support over the year and wish her the best. Oh, she's not here tonight, but we wish her the best. She's a great help. And we look forward, well, we look forward to working with you. <laughs> we look forward to having you members, so we look forward to having you too with us. And I think it's great that you'll be back up. There's a lot going on next year. Yeah, so okay. we get together when we need. Um, one of the other things we did with the um, school committee was the CPAC board followed budget negotiations very closely. Yes. Um, we were at a lot of your meetings and we were there. So after several meetings and discussion with members of the school committee, we prepared and read a statement of support of the school budget to the Congress Finance Committee. It's really cool. Um, one of our big highlights of the year, for those of you who are at last school committee, is the CPAC Appreciation Awards to members of the Concord and Concord Carlisle School District for having made a positive impact to members of the special education community. This is the second year that Tally Dittman, Brene, and Joanne Jensen organized the awards. This is a tradition for many years to come. We cannot lose that tradition. We're going to do that every year. And you know, you guys are here to see it. It's, 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 it's amazing. So we're going to keep going with that. Um, so thank you. So looking ahead, the coordinated review for both the Concord and Concord Carlisle School District is being conduct conducted over the 2019-2020 school year. The CPAC looks forward to having proactive involvement in the review. The West Ed Program Review was conducted in both districts in preparation, in preparation for the coordinated review. The regional report was distributed early this year, and the Concord report is set for distribution by September. It is important that CPAC play an active role in discussions around the findings of those reports. Out of district processes and procedures is an area of importance and is a focus for the CPAC for next year. We have agreed to schedule an open forum in September with Jessica Murphy. The details of the event are being discussed, but we feel this will provide an opportunity for improved communication. We're looking at doing kind of like a presentation and then a QA, similar to our coffee. And then with the addition of the new district wide self contained K1 classroom. The CPAC would like to ensure that parents' caregivers are given periodic updates and that the district and classroom team are available for comments and observations to ensure that students' needs are being met. The CPAC will continue to be available to parents and caregivers in the community to provide support and discuss issues pertaining to special education in both the districts. So, thank you. And in closing, it is important for us to remember that we're all here for the students, parents, caregivers, the community, and the district, as stated in the district mission. The mission of the Concord Public Schools and Concord Carlisle Regional School District is to educate all students in becoming lifelong learners, creative thinkers, caring citizens, and responsible contributors in a global society. The district core values are academic excellence, respectful and empathetic community, professional collaboration, education equity, continuous improvement. The CPAC respects this mission and core values. We look forward to continued collaboration with the school committee, the district, and the community. Thank you. Any <laughs> questions, comments, observations? All the I love the, the level of involvement and energy in those awards were pretty special. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but all the work you've done throughout the year. Thank you. Yeah, so. faculty, staff, everyone in the building. I mean, go, go the extra mile. I will just say, go ahead. No. 
I just say too, I was, I've been the liaison and then kind of a backup liaison and everything. And it, it is still amazing the growth over the few years that you guys have been around, just what it became year after year. Um, the growth of what you're doing and the engagement, and it's so appreciated by parents. And I'm just so impressed with constantly with everything that you're doing. I really appreciate it. And then from our perspective too, when when you guys got together and Melissa and I joined you to go through the budgets and 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 based on that, you made the statement to the finance committee, and I will tell you, I think that made a huge difference. They heard from you guys and other people that that you were behind the budget, and I think it helped us get to a better place. So we really appreciated that when, yeah. when you did that. Great, thank you. And if, again, if you're not familiar, because four years ago was when CPAC really got regenerated here. Right. There was not, there was, but CPAC there was didn't nothing. exist four years ago. Well, this is year four. Yeah. And um, there was uh, Becky and Mary really got it off the ground, and Jessica, and they just, they developed the bylaws. They started the meetings. The meetings do run as open meeting. We are considered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What the right word is, but we have to run by open meetings and we do that. But I mean, the groundwork is done and they've done a lot of work over those years, so I encourage you to read through the reports for the last couple of years because now we can start to do some work and hoping to get some more volunteers. A lot of the other parent groups, it's we need somebody, yeah, more people, which is good. Well, you do a lot of work. an incredible amount of work. I mean, just watching, listening to what you've done with your group, um. Then, you, as you say, four years ago. I mean, I started six years ago. There's no CPAC, and watching from the start, kind of pulling it together to now, how comprehensive it is, and still more ideas. And it's really, it's such a, it's such a um, amazing service to our parent body, and as as much as our community and our teachers and um, everybody to be educated and be supported in that way. It's really, it's it's awesome what you guys do and the amount of time you devote to it. So these kids and, and families are really lucky. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, I uh, went to two or three year meetings about like three, three and a half years ago, and I think that's when this, this whole group really yeah, got started. started yeah. And I think there were like five or six, at the most seven people there. And now I've kind of watched it from a distance, uh, mm -hmm. and you seem so much more organized. You have many more uh, ways to communicate, and the energy I think is uh, exemplary. So I, I think you're doing a great job, and uh, I'm, I'm wondering what you're going to do next year. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I think, I think uh, having a presence is what's really important. Oh, you know, I mean, absolutely. it's not all of the things. It, it is all of the things, but having a presence and knowing we're there. And one of the things I'd like to say is CPAC's not an afterthought. You know, you guys ask us questions. We're, we're, we're mentioned at meetings. We're like, no, we have to have CPAC on this meeting or that meeting. And that, I think, is a huge huge compliment to the groups prior to this and now we can really just we can get in there and do the work mm -hmm. and um, you know when, when the issues arise we have a team ready to go we have conversations and they're seamless mm -hmm. it's great it's great thank you thank you for all your work thank you thank you very much so moving on to liaison reports and chairs report are there any so I just wanted to make one comment in terms of uh, the public meeting that uh, uh, Dr. Lori Hunter is going to be attending along with uh, several uh, school committee members. It's going to be this Thursday. Uh, the Finance Committee has invited us to uh, basically okay. start the new year off, the new year meeting, the new year as far as the school committee is concerned and, and the finance committee is concerned, not uh, any calendar year or anything, but uh, so we're all looking forward to that meeting and get uh, get to know each, each other better and, and presumably improve the, uh, the whole bunch of process going forward. So. Is, there, is there a presentation or is it a discussion? So when I asked that question, it the answer was to come and just talk. Um, so we've been doing a little, I talked with the town hall this afternoon on timeline and dates. So I think the attempt is to get all synced up on our, our master plan here. And I know they have a couple of particular questions. they hoping for information on zero based budgeting and I guess early thoughts on the CTA negotiation. It's really early. So. Those are items of interest for them, for sure. Also, uh, 
Oh, that's another topic. First, you. No, I, I, I didn't want to. Does anyone have any more questions about this? No, I was just so that's a posted school committee member? School committee meeting. We did post it just in case you want to talk Cause it during the meeting be. as a. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think we definitely should be. We did post it. Yeah, it's posted. Yeah. yeah. I'll be anxious. I, I can't go. I'll be anxious to hear about that. Mm -hmm. So. I was just going to say that there is um, graduation on June 2nd, and it's at 11 a.m., and we usually muster well before, mostly because the students won't get there and they do it an hour before, but um, I just wanted to be sure that everyone knew and everyone on the school committee is invited, and I don't know if you have any more you want to add, but just be sure if you want to be there, that's what it is. It's a pretty exciting day, and hopefully it won't rain. Right. <laughs> Don't even say it. Mary and I both have students graduating. Yes. That's great. Special time of the year. Um, in terms of correspondence, uh, we received a, uh, a reasonably lengthy email from a student at CCHS uh, concerning uh, mainly uh, his uh, endorsement of, of a track about the old uh, landfill and uh, his thoughts on parking. And I have to say, uh, coming from a student, this was very impressive. And uh, the teachers up at the high school must be doing something right. Because it, it just, I mean, we all read it, right? I mean, it was, uh, it was very that, uh, I mean, that was, that well was thought excellent. out. Yep. And then we also got. I, I think what was most impressive, he wrote that on his phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know he did. Uh, I can yeah. 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 Wow, this keeps up. <laughs> so we, we also heard from the Center for American Studies um, concerning handheld and other electronic devices and their effects on students and the general population. They have a sort of a, a, a statement saying don't become a tool of your tools, which I found interesting. So, and we've uh, I've met with the, uh, the gentleman, and we'll continue to be in contact. And we also got a letter from Delia Kay, who is the Natural Resources Director, uh, concerning uh, some ongoing drainage issues uh, near the lower uh, fields uh, between the stadium and the. Uh, and the train tracks, and we're addressing those as we go forward. Should we add anything more to that, or I, I mean, we're, it's early. It's early. We're working on what the remedy is and yep. how we pay for it. It was a, it was a tight timeline. Yeah, they at least time. requested. Yes. They, they, in terms of giving a plan, to, is that a realistic timeline, or are we going back to them and saying, well, we, you know, we met with them last week and ask for more time. Um, I think by the end of the week we'll be able to at least respond with what our next steps will be. I, when we met it was very clear that their primary goal is that the, rec the remediation happened in the summer. So I think keeping that in mind we probably have some room to craft, craft the timeline. That said it's May 21st so it is still a very quick turnaround. So. We're actively working on it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for taking that on. <clears throat> so moving on to old business. Um, the first item is the legal services RFP. And um, I guess we don't really need a vote on this, just sort of a, a general consensus that the committee is interested in uh, in posting this RFP. Any questions or discussion? Uh, I had a question which was mostly just because I don't work with legal firms and those related RFPs a lot, but um, I guess I didn't pull it up in time here, but um, it, all of the services that we're looking for that's someone, thank you, that's helpful, to provide are all just kind of listed individually do we have to specify, or is it possible that firms could come in and say, well, I can provide services one through five plus number eight for you, or 
Um, is that likely? Is that do, do we need to specify somewhere here that somebody could provide some of this, not all, or is that a given? They're gonna typically they would respond. Correct. Jump in and typically they would respond with what services they're interested in providing okay. to us. It doesn't so necessarily have to be it all of our services. Have to be all. Okay. You can already do use an olive cod approach. Exactly, that's why I'm asking because that's worked for us I think in general for a while. And not that we have to keep doing it that way, but I just wanted to make sure that that's still an option the way that we're sending this out. My understanding was you do in our oh sorry, go ahead. No, this is I had brought this up in the very beginning. Like do, do we know if we want one or two right. or, one or, two or, four or, or right exactly exactly what, what do you and I know, right? Right. And that's yeah. and to Heather's point does this invite that a la carte uh, uh, presentation around their specialties? And is the timeline still suitable for us? It looks very tight right now. Well, so my understanding about, first of all, the list is in RFPs being able to be as uh, all-inclusive as possible so that someone doesn't isn't disqualified because they, I mean, they wanted to include everything, but not necessarily someone that shows up with a, a, a proposal for everything, right. and the timeline is not dictated a little by law. Well, I think that I think the June first date is, is not yeah. is no longer than the list, which is fine. But really, really, what you're doing here is um, a number of the services are being provided, a number of the different areas being provided at uh, reasonable rates. There were some services that I think are under, under question, and this would be an opportunity to review rates from other firms. And you, you will always have the ability to draw on any firm. So if a particular situation comes up that you need some historical information, you're still going to be free to go where you need to go to that. So we so aren't by law required to do an RFP on legal services, so we have more flexibility here than is typical. Mm -hmm. um, I also did survey the, the number of local districts, so of eight local superintendents, um, there were only three different firms in those eight that's responses. That's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Is it fair, <coughs> fair enough to say that a lot of them are current and uh -huh. current stable? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just had kind of nitpicky grammar and comments, but I, like I would hope, this is going to go out with some kind of a cover letter, because it, like the background and goals seem very stiff to me, you know, and the only thing we said about our schools, we're located in, Con in Concord, and we have 3,000 students, 300 staff, and it wasn't very warm and fuzzy, but maybe it yeah. doesn't need to be. Yeah, I expected it would go with a cover kind of letter. A outlining okay. Okay. Ooh, yeah. personal um, touch too. Yeah. The only thing I think, I mean, I can give you, yeah, you know, I is that the only thing I would, that I don't know if it's worth discussion at all, but number three under professional qualifications says ability to provide guaranteed same day response. I was going to suggest we add like odd matters deemed critical by the district. Like, I'm not asking for same day response and absolutely every where we yeah where I, mean, we I, I, I only hesitate there because I've worked with a firm that this was a huge issue and okay. we couldn't even get quick we couldn't get timely responses even on something less important and so reasonable and timely all become up for debate perhaps but when you can't get an answer it can really bog you down even if it's something small yep. so okay. do you satisfy it with uh, same day response upon request. Well, that's, and that's, that's where I stretched out. determination whether it's critical or not. I just would say right now, the two firms to work with, we don't have to qualify any of that. They're both incredibly responsive. So. It does say it says ability, too. So. Yeah. I was just going to say, that, and this is kind of not required. Yeah. This isn't a contract with anyone. This is yeah. kind of asking for their general abilities. Then, as you know me, Laura, I just have grammar stuff. Yeah, no, send it. <laughs> Give me that. Thank you. Policy police. <laughs> That's good. We need you. That's common. <laughs> we need you. We depend on you. Um, I say 
let's keep going and help you know right. do, do right. this plan and yeah, so, reach out to so the so uh, June first is not no realistic. So what? <coughs> I'm just going to suggest the fifteenth. That's almost a month for them to respond. If you get it out to tomorrow, and then it's a holiday. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. We can always extend I, it yeah, if the response is. I don't know what's reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's clarify that because I think when we last talked, you had asked me to solicit 10 firms and start there without a broad based advertising. Is that still correct? I think so. I think so. Yes. We're not just looking for, you know, Yes. Okay. So we'll start there. So let's, yeah, so let's start with that directive. Yeah. Let's start with the 15th and see what we get. We can always 15th and direct. So, I just, yeah. so, yeah. so then, so what's the process after that? Then you'll look at it and I'm just trying to get a feel for the time. Yeah, I think, I think this is where it's different in every district. Sometimes they bring the certain firms in for some conversation. Sometimes it's just the superintendent talking to them and making a recommendation. I think that's where you'll have to tell us how much it's uh, your decision. So you need to tell us what the process you want, how involved you want to be. So that might be something to decide yeah. the next meeting before the 15th. Yep, absolutely. Now that we're this far. Yeah. Well, it'll depend on how many responses we get to. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, it's really thin, it might be easier. <laughs> So why don't we put that on for the 12th, this is to firm up the next Thank you. Okay. Anything else on this subject? Okay. If you have questions on any of that, we're just... Okay. The next item is the camp, Campus Advisory Committee and specifically the next steps that uh, the school committee should take in response to the uh, excellent report that we received at our last meeting. And you know, the report basically identified several projects uh, that were deemed to be uh, worth further consideration. Some of those were, you know, you could say shorter term oriented projects and, and others maybe a little bit further out in the distance, you know, solar power and the uh, the bathroom facilities at the stadium, I think that's that's a little bit further out. But in the short term, and I do recall the comments that the principal, Mike Mustulo, made, uh, he mentioned two uh, short-term projects, parking and a track. But we also have heard uh, and had a lot of student input from um, high school students concerning uh, a community garden and greenhouse and also an outdoor learning common. So uh, it, it would seem that, and I'm very interested in what everyone else has in terms of other priorities, but it seems to me those could be identified as, as priority items in the relatively short term. I think so. I, I'm happy to speak. I've given a bunch of thought to this and, and kind of went through and wrote down my thoughts on where we go from that, because that, that was so much information that I think we all kind of love going, oh my gosh, wow, now what do we do with this? Um, so I kind of feel like that after all of that, the Campus Advisory Committee gave us various things that recommended further exploration. I felt like as a committee, we need to, now need to come back and say, okay, of those things, which ones are we highlighting as priorities right now? Um, so I feel like we need to do that and highlight those and then lay out how we move forward kind of in regards to each of those and, and high level. And in terms of priorities, the three that stood out to me were one, parking, um, two, the track, and three, and I'm kind of clumping together, the out, outdoor experience <coughs> that I know, whether it's greenhouse, garden, outdoor commons and classrooms, it might be one, two, three things, but all of that kind of as a category together. Um, and then, so, so that's on what I feel like our priority should be. I can keep going on what I think the next step should be, but <laughs> or I can let other people chime in before I get there. 
Well, I had one thing to say just about that, and yeah. I, I'd be, I'm, I would be interested in your, your thinking on next steps too, because that's kind of where we are. But um, I, I think you've articulated what I felt as well. But I thought mm -hmm. we took parking out of sort of it, out of it, yes. and make it it's out of it to yep. let it right, right. exactly. Yep. It's just something, not something that we're going to. Yeah, we're taking that, and we've decided we would take that on and figure out short term, long term. Yes. You know, warrant articles, debt exclusion, et cetera, to, to what end, you know, like that's going to be on us as, as a district and as a school committee to resolve. Agreed. Yeah. I just wanted to mention yeah. that something that we have So I would, I would not say, neglected. Yeah, I would say we, um, I mean, we've had a few conversations around parking. I think John will update us and, and you know, we're, we're, we're just doing that like Right, exactly. Yes. We're already working. Yes. I would say right. let's take that off so the list track. of yep. exactly. okay, what yeah. next. But yeah. I would, I would say the same thing, that what next the top priorities seem to have risen to the top are the track and this outdoor possibilities, education, being sort of gardens and classroom. Yeah, perfect. That's good. That's exactly what I was going to say in terms of next steps. Oh, go ahead. I'd love to understand more about that because the way I understand it, we are working earnestly on a short-term solution. But would we not want to incorporate a longer-term parking solution with longer-term looks at track? and the outdoor uh, experiential learning yes. sites because all of those have to, I think, fit together lest we okay. paint ourselves into a corner with one of them in a way that we later regret. So can we look at parking in a two-phase approach, one being a now temporary mitigate urgent problems, two being a more systemic campus-wide look at what's going to ultimately happen yeah. Definitely, I think. It, I, I agree. Think. I think it, it sort of goes in very well communicated tracks if, if both Sorry. are if both are going forward. I think there's. I thought our agreement was we we got to do something now for parking, and now in those conversations has been like okay, short term, long term, and starting to define, you know, those questions which you know we haven't gotten to. But so dealing with that, and then I think there's sort of a connection to. The next steps and how it aligns and communicates with them. Exactly. So on the agenda, CCHS parking is a separate item, right. but I think it's probably a good time to blend it into this conversation yep. because the update on the temporary parking, uh, we did identify an area that we were excited about, and we've started that exploration process, and we, uh, it's not really feasible uh, with the type of information that we had and with the type of plan that we were thinking about because what it would have provided was uh, around probably at a max maybe 50 spaces but there's a number of issues that are coming up regarding the choice of materials the drainage the zoning consideration potential impact on the water conservancy district and so it seems um, what what we had in mind is off the table short-term implementation. So the court is absolutely correct in the sense that all of it should be, in my opinion, should all be weighed in together as part of a, a larger process. And it's probably something that you folks want to take up in earnest. I know that there's some conversation regarding uh, potential for a special town meeting in the fall. I just, uh, need to note that uh, you're going to need two town meetings to, to move anything, to do anything substantial here. So you have to coordinate the Carlisle town government as well. So I'm going to say something really unpopular. It's probably, I'm living in a glass house here because I have a kid who's graduating. Um, if we're not going to have additional parking spaces come in the fall, can we change the rules for parking? There are lots of students that need to park for legitimate reasons, and a lot of students that drive their cars because it's easier or whatever they, they do. So like, we can continue to fight this there are too many cars and not enough spots where we can just sort of change the rules of the gauge. And, and I, I don't know if that's for this committee to decide, but we're, if we're not going to have more spots in the fall, we're, this is just going to drag on and take more administrative time. And 
we're just kidding ourselves unless we do something very different. So this is really... So how unpopular was that? I mean, again, yeah, it's no, like, but that's, I, that's, I, that's I agree. realistic. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There should no, be really. something, or if it's just right. going to So I more. think we do have a lot of discussion to have about the fall, because to, to leave the meetings we had last week with the complexity of the situation um, the way it is and being presented to us and the challenges to get from where we are to where we want to be, we have a lot to talk about for the fall because right now we have no solution. And um, yes, all the long-term pieces need to be part of one big picture. That's part of why I didn't recommend the Warren article back in April. Um, but I don't think any, any group that's going to work on those projects you just mentioned wants to get distracted with the challenges that are going to come with the parking. It all has to have conduits of communication between each other. But um, one thing that we think are very clear on is that it's not simple, and it's going to be complex, and it's probably going to be expensive. So there's a short-term discussion, and then there's a much a bigger long-term discussion. So this is all <coughs> as of a few days old. And the short term, I think what you're saying is the sh a short term, it's not a solution, but a, a short term tactic is without extra parking that we look somehow at. Somehow we have to cut some the number we, of cars that are right, coming. But somehow we look at managing it differently. Correct. I don't have the answers to that. Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's not yes. <laughs> None of us do. It will be but very unpopular. Yeah. But, but yeah. how unpopular is it today? Like, I mean, it, it's just. And, and ultimately, one of our tasks is to see that you and Mike get to do what you're here to do. And we need to get kids to school. And we need to allow the town to operate with uh, somewhat reasonable parking on nearby streets. And if, if we don't look at solution B because temporary solution A isn't available, I think we're derelict. Is it popular? No, I would agree with you. It's not That's why popular. we have to sit on this is, side of the table. Yeah. Is it necessary? Uh, unless somebody has another temporary solution, the answer is yes. It is necessary for us to look at internal policies for what happens on the grounds of that campus, vis-a-vis -vis who can park and who can't. Otherwise, we know what happens because it's happening now. It's deemed unacceptable. So the question is how? How do we move ahead quickly? Because Nobody likes uh, to be uh, discomforted in any way. And sort of we can let people anticipate changes that are going to be necessary for next year the better. So it's clearly a top priority right now to further explore any options we have concerning mm -hmm. parking. And we're working on it, you know. We are working on that. Um, it seems, you know, what Joanna said about sort of two tracks moving at the same time. I think that makes makes quite a bit of sense. We clearly have to move forward on the parking issue and involving possibly some unpopular changes. But we have to get to some. Well, if we don't have more spaces, we need fewer cars. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, a, it's I physics, right? Different, I think we have to change the, the conversation. Of the if we're not going to be able to have pick more spaces next year. Yeah. Okay. That, that's the key between now and for, you know, sort of people take off. Yeah. But the, the alternatives didn't become unpopular tonight with John's information. Some of the solutions are going to be unpopular in some quarters regardless. Mm -hmm. right. Right. I don't think that part's going Because if, if we need 100 new spots and we can only get 50, we right. still have some tough choices to make, right? And I'm just throwing that out there. And it's going to be educational money. Well, and the thing about it is there's very limited space to consider. Parking has to be flat, and it has to be big <laughs> space. And so there are not a lot of options, despite the fact that there are a lot of acres. So, you know, parking is on one side, and then you, we have these three or four other yeah, projects that are sort of Okay, so process-wise, you want my idea? Well, I mean, no. yeah. You got one? Give it I'm thinking okay. you want to give it to us. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, so here are my ideas. Well, and I'll leave parking. So I'm thinking of this in silos. Parking is one silo. Absolutely. Um, and, and we won't 
define right now exactly how we're going to move forward, but that's one silo that needs some short-term addressing and a long-term strategy. So we'll park that over there. Thank you. No <laughs> I had to. We don't have any room for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Darn. That was out on the street. I'm not going back in. Um, okay, so then, um, coming out of this, the, the other things that uh, we just talked about as priorities are the track and then the outdoor thing. So I'm going to look at those two separately. In terms of the track, uh, I think the biggest question there is funding. Like if we're looking at a track, how are we going to fund it? What does it look like? So I feel like on that, that needs a small group of people to follow up on it. Some small you know, planning, funding exploratory planning committee that's going to focus on what could funding a track look like. Is it all private money? school money, is it a mix, is it, what does it look like? And based on that information that we could then figure out more about moving forward and get to, you know, a building committee and a more broad planning. So like, but first it's about how would we fund it and therefore what would the process look like. So I see a small group to look at that. Then there's the outdoor stuff, which honestly I think is really administrative thing. So uh, given that Lori has said that's something that she and Mike could manage, um, I feel like that, that's something. We don't have any money, but we can manage. Right. <laughs> but without money, you can do a lot. Um, but I feel like if we give the nod and say that's important, then we we don't want to stand in the way and create a bottleneck with other committees and all that. Then we give Lori the nod and say, okay, that's for you and Mike. Go and figure it out. Um, but, but giving the nod implies potentially some funding. Maybe not a big number, but some funding. Right, and then they could, and I think they would come back to us with needs. Okay. Is that? But I mean, there's, we're talking a different scope of funding on a track versus yes, a, you know, an outdoor right. classroom. Yep. Um, or it could be rolled into some of the more article discussions. Where I, mean, I think there's yeah. options down the road that don't necessarily need a committees. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I just wouldn't. I feel like those things are yep. more kind of small, low-hanging fruit enough that if we have a committee to try to run it, we're just gonna slow things down as opposed to letting Mike take it and run with it. Does anybody know us what's out there now? The canoe with the flowers? Yeah, yeah, I saw the canoe. I saw the canoe. Yeah, the yeah. yeah. the palace. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. yeah. palace. Yeah. Yeah. benches on a palace. Oh, a palace, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which I thought yeah. could, could remind us that students could have a uh, relatively uh, large voice. In, oh, in they, in yeah, one absolutely one right. Kind of a lot spectrum. Yeah. And I, I see what you're saying is it's going from idea to concept to concept of alternatives. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anyway, those were, those were kind of the two moving forward pieces, a track and then the outdoor things. And then as kind of an umbrella, when we all started talking about a campus advisory committee, it, you know, we debated the charge and what it was. Some of the initial discussions had it as a standing committee that would then kind of address things that came up and there would always be a group to, to bounce things off of. Um, I don't think we need, and, and this I've been debating mentally because of our last discussion, when you know Bob was saying, let's keep this committee going, and Mary's saying, I don't think there's anything for the committee to do anymore. I, I feel like there could be value in a long-term standing committee, but that's something that maybe is a district committee, that maybe we even ask Lori to create, um, or maybe she wants to create one. But if there is some type of a committee that basically I think could help administration and us. When things come up that are campus related, it could be a way that we can sort through it in an organized way and address it and know that, okay, well that committee's meeting again in February, we'll take it up then. Um, you know, whether it's a committee that we create or a district committee and we're invited to, that, that we could all like to do. But I feel like something that's just a standing group that maybe meets three or four times a year. This is not a you know, every few weeks we're getting together doing things, but a standing group that can that can filter ideas and projects that come through regarding the campus, um, and obviously can kind of keep tabs on these other things that we're working on. Oh, and the last thing in terms of, to your point, making sure that all these hands are talking to each other, um, I think it would be very important, you know, if we're creating a small group to look at track options, that the primary charge obviously is figuring out funding options, but a secondary piece of the charge is to communicate and coordinate with other groups working on campus. And, you know, all of these would be charged with staying in communication, 
be uh, in relation to the other projects. And then a standing committee could help you the umbrella for that. So that's my opinion. Would that be different from a long-term planning? The long-term planning? Yes, from the from. Well, uh, well uh, is there a long-term planning committee here? No. 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 Okay. So it would be different yeah. from it. <laughs> there's a there's a concrete long-range plan committee, which is very different. That's like comprehensive town long-range plan. No, no, I was thinking. But we don't have a. Plays a small role in. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, we don't have a, a long-range planning yeah. committee of our own. Well, I think it would be great because this committee could sort of serve that role, which is if somebody wants something, you can say, well, that is actually, you know, we're working in that direction. Right. As opposed to everything is brand new idea <coughs> that has no place to be discussed or fit into the larger scheme. Right. But, but I'm undecided on the long-term nature of uh, for this reason. I, I think you're... Uh, your reasoning is very sound, but I think we also need to add in what, what motivates people to uh, participate, and participate actively. One of the things that might motivate them is that there is more specificity about a goal that they're trying to attain together. Um, and, uh, folks might come at this with a little more commitment and passion than uh, a committee that is uh, charged with, uh, let's see what comes your way. Well, I would, I'd argue if it's really three or four times a year, that, should, that might be this committee. And if there's something specific that comes at us, then we're farming it out. Or, you know, yeah, it's it's a, so, it's really you know, I like the, <laughs> the idea, but maybe that's something we should discuss more at length at our workshop. You know, just in terms of what type of, Whether, you know, the longer yeah. term aspect, the yeah. other things obviously we should you know, yeah. put back on the front burner and, and yeah. discuss those. But because, you know, I, I could see an advisory committee working there also. You know, the other uh, model would be an admit administration uh, oriented committee with one or two school committees members on it. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's, I, I haven't personally thought enough about it to, to be strongly you know, feeling one way or the other, but both, I think, would work. And, so, something you know, people can give thought to. I like yeah. the idea of talking about that at our workshop, at our workshop no. in August. No, a little more time. The past no. So, I don't, it's not, like, I don't want to form a track and field committee until this committee decides that we, that that's our top priority, or, or whatever the, like, we're, we're kind of right. trying to figure out what yep, the committee should Yeah, we did kind of jump ahead. But what right. are, and what the, are, you know, the, the campus advisory made like five, you know, listed five or six things. What do we want to move forward with? Right. And, that, that and, and I know we, we keep that. using exactly. the track as the example, but what about the field house? Or yeah. No, so let's go back to that. How, yeah. is, how are no, we as a committee going to work Exactly. Out? So that was the first part of my comment. And, and my personal opinion was that the track and the outdoor things rose to the top of the priority list. But that's Let's return to that because that's something yeah, that needs right. to be. We're not arguing that, but I, right, think, exactly. I think we should make a clear decision. We need to, exactly. To I agree. And that's what I'm saying that I think, I feel like out of tonight, ideally, or at least soon, that we should get to that. We as the school committee need to say, okay, thank you for that report. Out of all the things that you recommended exploring here, are the things that we think are the top three or whatever it is to mm -hmm. pursue. Mm -hmm. So the problem with that, in my mind, is. Um, all these things compete for the same space. And in particular, parking is going to compete for the same space as these things, and we've determined that parking is a real stressor for us. Um, the second thing is, in my experience, around these, this level of projects, be it a field house, a track, a rink, a, that they only happen when a group of private citizens come forward and say, we want to do this. We have some level of funding. We will, you know, they, they look to us, you know, the original two turf fields, the white fields, the CCA play, the tennis courts, the, they all had the lacrosse group. They all have, you know, they, they came as a sort of, we have this idea and want to do it. So short of that, I don't, I don't, I don't think us, to, I don't think we're in a position to determine um, what should go there. Because I don't think that we, one, 
I have the fun in too, where all things compete for the same space. I mean, I take tonight. Like I don't. Maybe I continue to talk about it, but we are. I just think, and we don't have any funding, and we don't. You know, it, it, the, the 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 level of funding and design and all those things that would be needed in any one of those projects is a ton. Sure. And in the most recent public private, and even the library, all the ones I've seen, the museum, they you know they come for CPC funds. They come for you know it's not. There are a lot of layers to it, or uh, CPA funds, the Community Preservation Act. They find different ways and different buckets to fund all these things. Um, so I just think that the, the funding is a huge piece, slash the people who say, I want to design this and make this happen, um, need to exist. And they also all, right, currently compete for the same space. So the, the, the group that I would call the track group, which is consistent of a couple of the coaches and many parents. It's the largest team at the high school. Uh, they presented us with a very detailed uh, RFI. Mary, right? The, the most detailed of any of them, but I won't. Yeah. Not at the level where we have really information. No, no, no. But, go ahead. But, but my point is there, there is a group of people out there that uh, clearly they, they are somewhat organized, it seems to me, but not to the point where they've already done fundraising, etc. because, as you said, Joanna, and I, I agree with that completely. You know, the, the, who's going to do any fundraising if, you're not sure you're going to have a project to put the money into, right? So it's a little chicken and, and an egg type of thing. And so if we give an indication that this is a priority for the campus, which I think that's fair to say it is, as is, of course, parking and the outdoor projects, of, and, and they're much easier to place they don't really compete as much with other you know uses it, it's the track and parking is, is potentially going to uh, to compete with each other and but we if we don't move forward on both then you know we lose valuable time because of town meeting uh, we need a feasibility study at some point uh, if we want to be serious about it right so I, and, I guess if you were, we were serious about some projects, we're serious about doing a, a, that level of project on the campus, we would have to go back to deeper into the list and public, you know, and community, the school's input. If we were really going to build something, I think there would be competing, you know, groups. Well, Guildhouse, ice hockey rink, um, track. I'm not saying which, like, but I'm saying, like, think if you're, if you're, if we were going to say, I, I just don't think we're in a position to say, Tracks the one. I think it's a great option, but I don't think that I don't. I don't know. Am I wrong? I feel like if, if we were going to really do a capital project that was millions of dollars, we would winnow down that list to the top three or something and say, let's figure out. Let's go back and look at the you know the needs. What would the you know more dig down new new advisory or whatever of all the, the work that you guys already did. I just. I don't, I don't feel like I know that the school community would choose track over some of the others. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I was reading them for that. The, the feel that I got from the campus advisory report was that that seemed to the rise higher on the others in the list of momentum and community support and potential funding that, that there was a group there ready to kind of run and fund it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe we need more. I, so I kind of felt like the, the charge of the campus advisory was to do that, to get the community feedback and figure out what's the, what's the best option to recommend. But you bring up a good question, is that, was that the full scale? Do we, do we need to do it a level deeper? I don't, I don't know. I mean, um, we need to do it a level deeper. Well, just the okay. Well, John wants to see. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very and good point. Eight lane track or a six lane track. There's Absolutely. Yep, yep. Are there other configurations for parking? Yep. That might be allowed. Right. With, right. with yep. changed, uh, changes in 
the engineering approaches to it. And I may recommend to you that with the possibility of an upcoming special town meeting in Concord, that there be some discussions perhaps with Carlisle about a similar initiative. Or, or a decision made by the regional school committee to wait for the next town meeting cycle do a significant warrant article to address the parking to get in, have a provision in there to have the types of feasibility studies and engineering studies in conversations uh, with the zoning folks to have the engineering analyses that they will need. I think that's really good. Those might be very good next steps. And then you can form an action committee to resolve some of these issues. And would that assessment around parking uh, take into account potential other projects that would follow? I think I think you want if, would if you it, folks right? have made yeah. a decision that you want to expand the parking and that 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 has been pretty pretty much determined yet that there, that there is a, a, a real desire to address the, the, the parking issues on a long term basis and not in a uh, Temporary stopgap measure, a substantive response to it. You need some, you need some significant work to figure out how it gets done and gets approved. And that will take money. And that you, you already know that you need to pave the ring road. You, you already know you need to do some lighting improvements. Yeah. There are some items in, inside the school that that uh, are suitable for treatment as capital expense items. There, there is a significant amount of money associated with those issues. And in with that warrant article, you can bundle in the types of engineering services that you need to move forward on, on these others. You may find out that some of the choices that you're advocating for or that you're interested in won't, won't get through. Given the past week, we've spent a good a good amount of time with the town, different groups, and <coughs> I think John's right. I think we sit and start with the, here's the list. What are viable options, or what makes them viable options? Um, because I think we are, yeah, we need to start with them. Is I think the the takeaway that I had the past week as well. So we don't spend that time and money coming up with plans that, that the 12th sense. hour when we share them with right. those who have well, oversight, no, um, it's not doable. That definitely like, makes sense. So if that's the case, we we start there. And if we're doing that, it sounds like there's there isn't a consensus to say it's track versus something else. We start there with the multiple ideas, right? And just get information on Okay, those multiple ones. A, a track is is a track feasible, et cetera, et cetera. And then a field house is it feasible, et cetera, et cetera, um, with so think, multiple ideas. Yeah, but I, so at some point that has to be fairly specific. You can't just say, right, like, hey, what could we do? Like we have. To, I feel we could send an engineer off for days or weeks or years. Saying, well, you can put a track there and a field house over there, and then we can get 22 parking spaces here. Like, how do we help? How do we share what priorities, or how do we manage the scope of it? So, I'm what, not even sure. what I'm hearing is, Joanna, you said it, Mary, you uh, stated your sense of what the advisory committee intended to do, which was to put ideas forth, not to necessarily advocate for or prioritize. You can go that far. So does that not uh, necessitate uh, not a special town meeting kind of calendar, but a next year's annual meeting calendar so that in the interim, we can number one, begin parking right away uh, in whatever way we can prior to town meeting, policies or otherwise, temporary or otherwise. And secondly, design some kind of process, to your point, Joanna, whereby we uh, look at the other proposals put forward and try to prioritize or rank order or uh, put some assessment around those around pros and cons, educational and otherwise. And then that goes to town meeting for uh, 
mortar or stone. So I think, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think um, one of my struggles is in terms of like advocating. The track has risen to the top of the list and um, we don't necessarily have a clear plan for a field house and I'm going to use this as an example because it's a, that would be a potentially very large, very expensive project, but if we were to talk to the community and get feedback for the kinds of things we could do, and I'm going to call it a field house, whether it's got hockey sometimes, and other, you know, other field house things, whatever, at other times of the year, there, there might be a greater level of interest. I mean, there's a lot of interest in a hockey rink, so I don't want it to be a popularity contest, I guess. We've heard a lot from track, and we had a by a court track on the committee. So I, want, I just want to be careful about that. And that's what my struggle is, is like, what do you tell an engineer to look at? Because there are these great ideas, or how do we get enough feedback to say, prioritize one over the other, or can we potentially do both, right? And I, that's crazy, I know right now, but. So one of the things that I think was very successful on the committee was the amount of time we spent learning about the conditions of the landfill in the mm -hmm limitations and the possibilities and I think I'm sitting here reflecting like on the fact that we need to better understand that of the entire high school campus because mm -hmm. what's happened in the last week is those limitations and restrictions have been brought to us as one idea floated which was parking and I feel like if we don't do the homework on what the different uses of the multiple areas of the campus are the way we did so in depth of the landfill it may drive the decisions more naturally, mm -hmm. which is somewhat what happened, why we got to track, right? Yeah, because yeah. it doesn't dig in and some of those other pieces. So how do we get that? I think it's meeting with stuff? the town officials who oh. are educating us on their their needs and their, their concerns coming into anything on that campus. And different groups have different, different needs, and I think we need to sit with all of them and better understand what those are. We've got them now. Not anecdotally, a little better than that, but informally. Um, but I think if we were to masterly, you know, really structure this so that we could hear their the requirements they have for what's done there, I think that would put us in a better place. So what about this as a kind of timeline of next steps? Very rough, but first step: do exactly what Laurie just talking about. Do really look into that, work with the town, get a better feel for what's possible where. Yeah. Second step, do that, based on that, do that second level of understanding community yeah. desires and needs, understanding where the driving forces are, um, and just that community input and outreach stage that, that will help us further define what is the top priority. But but to Laura's but point, based on that, that might not be many that might not be, <laughs> yeah, it might be that that's not even necessary because only one thing is a possibility. But so, or could you have one piece of land that's actually available without swapping other pieces around or something? Right, exactly. It could be those kinds. Of so things. that could define it, and if it, I mean, feasibility could define it. And if feasibility doesn't, and we have, you know, two potential options that we could look at, then we go and figure out right. what's the community desire. Yeah. So let's say, let's just say we could have this is crazy. We could have a parking lot on that landfill, or we could have a track. Right? We're gonna go figure out. Right. If those are our only two options, potentially we make the call, or we go. Right. Then I think we go get some community input and figure out what's best, and then come back to the. Well, I so so the community. In, the, this is all like. I, no big, no million dollar projects have I ever seen happen without someone driving it with a big donor. Mm -hmm. right. And the reason the BD Center is there is because mm -hmm. the money was there from the donor, it was in the will. The reason, you know, CCA play happened because there were a few people who said I'm willing to give a lot of money and a lot of time and different groups, tennis did a fundraiser, you know, lacrosse, soccer, a whole bunch of groups also donated CPA funds for families. It took a group to drive it. Happened at the museum, it happened at Emerson Umbrella, it happens at the library, it happens everywhere. That someone comes in and says, I want to do this, I'm willing to give a lot of money to it at the time. 
So after that, I want to be really wary of spending a lot of time on something that we don't have any mm -hmm. funds for. And we have one thing that we feel a lot of pressure on and a lot of stress on families, and that's parking. So if we're going to spend time on trying to resolve something that is real right now. Candidly, the track would be awesome. The field house with a rink that could be, be awesome. But that also takes off some, something else offline because you can't build on the landfill. The track, there is one down the road right now. It's like there, there, are, there, are, there is one thing that we have agreed that is providing enormous stress for families. And if we don't start working now, we're not going to have anything for a while because what we learned was there's, it's, the whole campus is in a water conservancy district. The rules, the laws are totally different. It's near wetlands on part of the campus. It's, you know, there's an AU, whatever it is with the, D, the Department of Environment, the environmental, you know, regulations of what we've just installed. There are, I mean, there's so many things that it's not simple. And we agree on one thing that's really pressurized and we may decide we're not going to do it in the configuration that they allow, but they are not going to allow us to put parking just anywhere. They're not going to allow us to just use any material. They're not going to allow us to, um, you know, all different things. There's different things that could be on the landfill versus the places outside the landfill. There's, I mean, it's so complicated. And so, I don't want to spend a ton of time on something that's just like pie in the sky, as much as it's like awesome idea. And we have a real issue and we are, we're, we're under the gun and we're not going to pull off what we hope we would. So do we imagine then that we can't uh, muster any uh, interest anywhere until we tell people what's feasible? Uh, and parking rises as number one now. Have we ever come up with a definitive number of the uh, minimum number of spaces we would accept? I'm not sure we have. I've heard 80, I've heard 100. I think we need a number. Yeah, this conversation was a stopgap measure. Yeah. Well, what's the real number if we're going to go for a real number? The real number is if water will count for the junior class. If you don't do it, we have to decide. What? We have to decide so the if you, if 300 more. for any inquiries that Lori or anybody else makes on behalf of the yeah. schools. We can. Well, I think, um, to and take, take that another step further, I think what we, at least with parking, I think you're right. We should be very, very specific. We should really go back and say, okay, there are exactly this, I know you have them, but we don't have, you know, there are this many legal spots, tend to be this many not, there are this many that, you know, don't have parking, like, we should, because if, if you're right, if, if it's because a lot of it's calculated in their pervious service calculations, and there's a grandfathered number, there's a number we're at, there's a law, there's a legal number, there's, you know, we probably have to be like really precise in those, the, you know, to get to the next step of even what we're asking. That's my. So, if I hear you, you're saying, put everything else on the back burner and go parking. Put all our time and money into this resolving the parking. Well, my understanding, this is the caveat is the understanding is the parking can be included in a warrant article. And that the immediate work would be town feasibility work that is uh, not contractual work. So, so I, could, no, I was going to say, I agree that the top priority is parking and that we don't want to just focus on that and we don't want to spend time on flying the sky and stuff like that. So I'm totally with you on everything that you just said, Joanna. Um, and I think it's a good reminder for us to all stay focused. Um, at the same time, I think we could start to understand what other options could be. And the one thing that I would say in, in response to the, your comment that you're right, nothing big is going to happen without a group coming in and saying, I'm going to drive it and I'm going to help fund it. Um, but th that, I think it gets back to the chicken and the egg concept, which is that may not happen until we have an understanding and communicate what could be possible on this campus. So with parking as the first priority, and I think we should establish that and say, yes, let's, let's make that our priority, let's figure it out because it's what's causing stress for our students and let's not lose it to something else. Let's keep that the first priority, but then if we can at the same time start to understand with the town what the other options on the campus conceivably could be, I think that would be a useful thing because then if we know what the other options are and we communicate that out, we see if there's a group that says, oh my gosh, really, we can do that? Okay, we're there, we're behind it, 
we're going to drive it and help you fund it. So if that exists, then great. If it doesn't, then there's no point in wasting it's our time. It's also going to inform the best place to put your parking. But, right, right. <laughs> so that you can say, no, this space will work for a field house, and this one won't right. or track. And so maybe that's where the parking should be. So I think that, that to have a study of the available spaces so that you can do that, let's start with parking. can be done in each area plan. based on, yeah. Well, I at think least from the town's perspective in terms of limitations. You want to study to determine where parking can be achieved most economically. Yeah. And then you want to figure out what's the impact of that. And right now, it looks like the most economical place would likely be on top of the, the old student parking lot because it has a lot of provisions on it. Then you want to determine if there's another site that could also be done and run the cost differentials between those two so that you preserve that landfill area for the other things that we're talking about. So you, you, you want options. You want to define options with engineering analyses that will satisfy the questions that have come up with the town. With the permitting process so, and, with, and with possibly the TVP. I, I think that makes sense. Um, what, what's your ballpark figure on the cost of that study? <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I can't just throw a number at you. No, no, no. But a range, maybe? Or? I, I, Minimum. Minimum I, max? Tens of thousands. Yeah. Easily. I would say uh, I several tens of thousands. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, if I had to establish a range just on the spot, I'd say 60 to 100 in town or something like that, depending on how many options we call up. Again, I go back to, but if we're looking at options that we can't, we have, not, we have no funding for and we have no group ready to carry the ball. I just think that's not a good use of our money. You can't, you can't go to a group without well, having something that's defined. Why, okay, so work. so let me flip it around. If there's a group out there that's interested in these things, a track or field house, we are open to having them come say, we'll do the work to go to that camp, you know, to so the town boards so and figure they, out if we could if we could do pull this up on the campus. That's, so that's, that's what that particular goal. goal. That's going to, you know, Track people might be willing to do that. The hot people <coughs> might be willing to do that. I think you want kind of an independent study there, and then figure it out from there. That's yeah, why I would, I would suggest that you bundle it into a warrant article that is is part of the non-controversial things. I don't think there's any controversy about paving paving the access road. There's a controversy about the money associated with it. But the big part of the money on that study will come from parking and or track or other uses. You know, it's not the resurfacing, you know, we it's, don't... It's, it's a fairly, you know, maybe it's 10% or something. But I, I, I don't want to be argumentative, but I think that what I don't want is, is for a group of whoever to come to us and say, Here's a check for $10 million. Put my fill in the blank, my, my field or my whatever there. Because that's, we've got to prioritize that. Right, I agree. I think I'm just pointing out that the reason, the way it's the only way it's going to happen. That's the way. And, and <laughs> you know, they, they, they cleared up the whole woods to put two turf fields in. And I, don't, I wasn't around on the school committee then, but it was initiated by the people who wanted to. No, no, but anyway, I, I, we, maybe we go back to sort of working on it in the workshop. And personally, I kind of like the idea of maybe a smaller committee of administrative um, school committee people who are sort of the receptacle for ideas on campus. To your point, Heather, of something of something that becomes like, you know, we need we need somehow to kind of organize it and keep it in one place, and maybe that. Something like that becomes the, the vessel for doing some of this work to say let's do let's let's do um, I think if we need a warrant article for this much to do a, an assessment of can you put a building on or, I mean I don't know I just feel like there's so many great ideas I love them all but I just want to be realistic and we have a real serious parking issue and that parking is going to compete for the space of any one of these so the next sorry go ahead. 
Now, the next steps forward would be to check with the town engineer, et cetera, et cetera, to ascertain where anything can go. And like how long? How do you ask that question? But, oh, you, I wasn't finished yet, so. How are we going to know that? Uh, Anything. How, when and how long would it take for the, you know, the NRC and other town departments to determine that? It's going to be, they need to review some sort of plans. Okay, so they, in other words, we have to present them with a plan and then they say, okay, this is this is fine. This is I like a certified yeah. engineer. What, right? what yeah. features yeah. have you built into this slot that make us not yeah. worry about the pervious service? Okay. So I think we have to back up and yep. Yep. come to grips with how many parking spaces we consider to be the minimum, and then how that uh, relates to any policies vis-a-vis -vis who can park and how. Those two are going to collide, they're going to no intersect, question. and it's on us, I think, uh, with Lori's recommendations. Yep. Uh, so I think we have to put together those two, uh, those two facts before we can then give any charge to anybody to come up with any plan to give to anybody. We need to know what we're asking for, and, and our level of expertise goes as far as what student needs we need to uh, deliver to uh, so on what? that property. Why don't we do, Bob, Bob and I have been in the meetings with the town and the town engineer and the Natural Resource Commission and, that we had in the last couple weeks. What if we, by next meeting, um, come back collectively, the, the three of us, four of us, do that work to say, let's get really specific. What do we have? How many parts, you know, and then like sort of come back with maybe, can we, do you think that's realistic? We can get more specific and more specific about yeah. sort of our actual ask. That is like accommodates what we need to. It's not yeah. something we'll target. Sure. Yeah, and maybe it's like you know the platinum and then the, <laughs> yeah. the paper. Uh, and, and to that point, um, I would suggest the platinum wouldn't uh, include the the head count of juniors and seniors and faculty necessarily, but rather our demonstrated need for parking because we've got data. And it's not every single. No, it's not every single junior, but we know that we know that staff is not uh, perfect. In the I guess. So. And parents have to find the best trouble right? finding spaces. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. True. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all true. All true. Yeah. 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 I mean, we're going to start school in the fall. Nothing the different. Same problem. No, I'm already right there with you, Mary. We need to figure out a message of and what to expect. And if we want to put through anything at town meeting that has a large parking component, we as a committee, I think, will need to look at every option of reducing the total number of parking spaces. Because if we come to town meeting with 250 additional spaces, it's, it's going to be very difficult. Very difficult. It's my personal without, opinion. No, I agree with you. Without um, looking at without the funding, al yeah. transportation alternatives. <coughs> Every um, option um, under the sun. we put yep. this out to the kids because they'll solve the problem. There you go. <laughs> that's, right. Right. that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Like, that's right. Get, yeah. Getting the students involved. And, and okay. No, the that's car, I don't know how the, the carpool thing worked out. Now, but, you know, yeah, that's right. like, and that's those are cultural changes that are not going to happen by the first day of no, school in September. So, no, so no way, no, no way. Uh, All right, so we got a plan. I think we will we'll, we'll do a little more work. Yeah, to absolutely. Get a more specific and no, we got. I think we got to do a reasonable amount of work, and but you know, there's limitations, and yeah. you know, we. I'm happy to try for everyone to understand what what they yeah. are and so forth. I think. I think we've got to schedule a meeting or two and get some more details. We're going to try something. You'll clarify what you're doing. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Well, I'm still probably going to get a call on my way home, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, we've got to, what are we Let him sleep tonight. Okay. Yeah. That's going to be so much shit. Right. <laughs> okay. I think we've. I think we've done exhausted that one. About as well as we could have done on this. We have and, somewhat uh, of a direction moving forward. Yeah. I. Uh, it, it's it 
just has gotten that much more complicated, you know, in the and last I think we should be two or three weeks, and uh, I don't think anyone really anticipated that. Right, correct. And I think that's, depending on what happens next, that's the kind of information <coughs> that needs to get out. Exactly, that's right. That will that's right. It's having right. yes. an impact on me today. No I mean, question. Clearly, you guys are feeling very different than mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago where we might find 50 spots off in a corner somewhere. Yeah, yeah, no. Well, before, before we leave, this just yeah, yeah. one quick question, John, for you. What's the uh, uh, explanation that will go out from uh, your office and Lori's in regard to why the, uh, the uh, solutions we considered as potential temporary ones were not acceptable? What was the central reason? Uh, this, the drainage, the impervious okay. surface Got it. impact, and uh, potential impact the water conservancy district. Yeah, I think the, the water supply is the basic. Yeah. Thank you. This okay, is, this that is, sounds pretty you know, that's the real, you know, This is kind better. of what I was getting at in terms of not just the specifics of the number of parking spaces, but we got incredibly educated and we are not doing that for you right now. Yeah. That's in, right. In, and so I think if we can be patient to the next meeting and arm you with Perfect. basically you. what we yeah. learned, the little better like, you know, synthesize down after a couple more meetings of like Here's what we learned, and this is why we got to this place. Because I think everybody needs the same information to be able to go out and answer questions that there will be. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 I'm feeling a little <coughs> right. embarrassed here. Yeah. We've got a campus advisory committee for Absolutely. Absolutely. Now we're yeah, I don't think I'm that discouraged yet. I, I might have been last week, but <laughs> I'm not that discouraged. I think we just got to step back and learn more yeah, so we can figure right. out how the options all play out and just what's involved with them all. It's just more complicated than we anticipated. I don't think it's impossible, though, to get no. there. So no. it, it, it really, more than ever now, though, it has to be a big picture view. That part is very clear. And we may have to get creative of exactly. as to what the priorities are and Relook at our original yes. thoughts as yes. to how we can accomplish them. Mm -hmm. so. um, I just want to, are there people from the school building committee that might be useful mm -hmm. in this conversation? Probably. They know that campus. Just, yeah, yeah I, 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 all, the, all the permitting for it. Yeah. I mean, they might help. That may be. Yeah. Yeah. You should keep mm -hmm. them. You probably be the person that would know, right? The best oh, candidate. It is definitely. Although this is really about water, basically. It really is about water. <laughs> you know, it, the only oversight the town has is over the, the water concerns. You so just, the rest is regional land, but the water. But the whole land. Right. Right. Yeah. The, um, but the building had to go through all the same stuff yeah. because that's it's, true. It's, yeah. it's in the water conservancy district. So I'm just saying there might be. You know, maybe it's a talking stand or stand yeah. the committee of just kind of, not, not, you know, just don't want to reinvent the wheel and we don't have to right. All right, I think we've uh, come to a point where we can go forward with uh, something else. Um, so next, uh, Joanna, do you want to sure. talk about um, the, uh, the evaluation? Yeah, this is, this is fairly straightforward. Those two links I, mm -hmm. I sent in, are what you need. Um, one is the rubric, um, and there is on the second page, I think, I'm going to look through here, of the rubric, it might be the other one, the guide to how to fill it out. Sorry, let me just make sure I have the right one. Um, it might be the evaluation form. If, if you go to the... Oh, so is it in the rubric? Um, in terms of how you fill out the form, I think it's on page eight. Is it was actually the last page, step? isn't it? It's close to the last page, yeah. Of the Same actual the evaluation. Form. Yeah. So if you, it's at the end of it. So yeah. after the evaluation yeah. form, you're going to fill out the place to put it after you've done it, how to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, right. That's right. You get to the bottom. This, this, this helps you. And basically, you use your rubric um, to uh, go through and um, do your evaluation. And so I'm not going to read any of this to you, but if you have questions, um, you obviously can ask me, but um, the, own, the, the timeline that Heather put together has you all each doing, and we'll have to get in touch with, it's Dan and um, Stan who will do it, and Melissa. Right. 
uh, Court and Christine, you don't have to do one. Um, so I'll have to get this to them. Um, by June 5th, you're to get them to me. And I will do the summative from those. So co according to the yep. schedule, you sent I that. sent that out to everybody. Everybody yeah. got it, right? And yeah. I think yeah. um, Lori sent her our uh, you said you're I'm own, almost on track. Okay. Schedule. Yeah. But you, Close. you're, you're, you're also you've reached out about meeting. So yes. you're, the onus is on us right. individually with Glory to make sure you meet before you do yours. I think I almost all of these. Yeah. I have a feeling that's why I got an email. Exactly. It's schedule. <laughs> um, and then uh, the survey is just a different piece that I haven't done before, but it, according to the schedule, will be available soon. Yeah. The survey closes tomorrow. Um, I checked the count over the weekend. Um, Almost 100 teachers have responded. Oh, so we'll see. Great. I send them a reminder Saturday, so we'll see. Great. What we have by tomorrow. Great. So um, so I assume we'll get that for our review when it's done. Yeah, once it's done, we'll just export so it out of survey monkey and forward it to you. That's, that's great. great. Another piece of information. And you should, you should be able to download this document and do it online. If it didn't work in the link, I'll send it to you separately. Okay, great. Because I, I have it so that you can. But um, And I think that's that's it. As long as you meet with Lori and you, we get our surveys to go through, and you guys can get those. I know, Mary, you might have time so issue doing with this the fifth. Meeting on the twelfth. The evaluation will be at the end of the month meeting, twenty sixth, or the the summative uh, oh. presentation. So why do you get so much time? Because it takes a lot of time. I gave her a lot of time to put it all okay. together. I actually, I mean, I can have a little less time, but it does. It takes. Yeah, it's considerable to compile. To take seven and make them one. No, I'm meeting with one of my ladies. Yeah, so I will try so, to get it done very soon after. If it's not done early, it's going to be done late. So. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's, that's, that's <laughs> profound. That's one way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm trying to be quick and efficient. Sorry. But I have a feeling now that I'm looking, the link might not allow you to work with it, uh, fill it out online. So. I will tomorrow also follow up with this actual but, form. Yes. Okay. Just send yeah. me email and, and for Vince, yeah. Dan, and mm -hmm. Melissa. Mm -hmm. um, and that should, if you have problems or questions, just ask me and call me. Yep. Great. And um, the school committee meeting dates, you quite a bit of work on that, um, right? Sure. So in this, I this is my sort of tweet proposal on the school committee meeting dates for next year. Um, it mostly affects, it has a bigger effect on the Carlisle members um, in terms of a few more joint than uh, CPS, just to be realistic about what we've done last year, last couple years, but also trying to keep um, you know some of the CPS separate and to try to be more disciplined about separating it out. So what I did here is well, two, two things, those are the two dates for August and July that works best for most, if not all. We got all in August, maybe we don't have one or two in July. What time in July? Oh, that's a good point. I was probably gonna, I was thinking we'd do the same thing, sort of five. But if people have work, and that makes it harder. Uh, we can do our usual 6.30 time. If people feel. Mary? Is, is that a workshop? What is, is that just a way to like, no. Yeah, just to, if we have some business, we gotta get done. Right. To, yeah. If we finally did, it would be really based on what has to get done. I know. Right. We, we, we would set up. It, was, to, it may be an if necessary next yeah. to it. I mean, it really, if we have to get some stuff done. Yeah, I guess it doesn't. It would be short. Yeah. Hopefully, it'd be not. I can't guarantee short. It would be necessary. <laughs> And there was the hope that one or two of these joints uh, meeting might uh, turn out to be uh, concrete only. Uh, yeah. This all out there yeah. for the benefit yeah. of I basically uh, changed uh, yeah, four them. so that we yeah. would schedule them as such. Because so, yeah. yeah. we did a lot of basically making this Carlisle people <coughs> come to the CPS, the ones that they didn't originally have on their date, on their calendar, so it was a little harder, and then they had to reschedule stuff. So, so You've got a, you have a bunch of March and April to cover town meeting, right? Yeah. And then um, only one in May and one in June. It felt like we should be adding one there. Then April 23rd. Um, like towards the end of the yeah. year. I feel like we. Well, I was, I was feeling like if we do so stuff. I mean, we can. I, I was trying to. I mean, we have in the past done 
CPS, um, you know, all improvement plans. Right, because when we do all the improvement plans and handbooks, and and all handbooks that, that takes a while for CPS. Um, you guys don't look to do that. You know? And that's really why to try it. I'm sure we're not going to have enough of the um, well, you're the one from Carlisle saying it's probably yeah, me right. to join. I have to be a both. <laughs> but it just makes no, sense. No, like does. I was saying, like, I can't plan this far ahead, but, you know. Better to no, have it than the week before it. saying, what do you mean you can't come to a meeting? Well, here's my worry. If we put it in as joint, I don't think we'll try to not be joint. I think yeah. it'll be like, oh, we have a joint, and we'll okay. just throw it all in. All right. But I'm, I'm happy. I mean, you guys, if you're, if you're okay with throwing on another one in the spring, or I don't want to say that now because I don't know my spring dates yet. So. I would also <laughs> just, be the one that doesn't make it after I did right. one. <laughs> Not to throw in a question for the answer of that one, but because it could relate. Um, one of our issues this year, one of the things we talked about was the fact that having our last meeting in June after school ends is hard on a lot of people. Would we want that last June one to be a week earlier and just have them, you know, two weeks in a row, but do it yeah. the 18th yeah. instead of the 25th? That's probably another. That's probably a good idea. And then at least we're not keeping, you know, principals yeah. and, yeah. Yeah. and everybody after school's out. Yeah. It also means that you can do some high school recognitions you might not be able to do on the Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. scheduled last day earlier than that, but I bring you for the Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. The 18th. so we're going to change the what? The 25th, the 25th to the 18th. To the 18th. And then, um, where's the last day? So that doesn't answer the question of whether we want to add one of being joined. But June 3rd, oh, joint. K, yeah, K8, sense. June 13th is the last day of school with no snow days. Graduation. Well, we we'll have snow days, though, right? Oh, right. Assuming we'll have a few snow days. We're going to be talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> bring you some ideas. <laughs> oh. Uh, so. Okay. So, so change. So what June? if we make June 11 joint? Oh, switch those two. Or. Oh. Make June 11 joint, and have a potential joint one on the 18th, and then. Or go to the add a joint on the first week of June and just go earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, we have one May twenty eighth. Right. I propose to suggest June eleven a joint and uh, keep the eighteenth uh, or the twenty fifth and decide if it's necessary. Because well, June eleventh would get us if there's no snow days, then we're in before the end of school. Is right. Yeah. So let's do joint on the eleventh. Hmm. And then the question is, I guess, do you still have another one? And if so, is it joint or CPS? You mean the 18th? Yeah. Yeah, you're going to need the 18th. There's so much stuff. Right, I know. There's, there's a lot. It's either year or no, yeah. yeah. summer. It's it's either, either, right, so the question is, is it CPS or joint, though? Right. The last one should be joint. Well, so oh, you're saying and the 11th be joint? And the 11th be joint, though. Oh, well, I propose well, that'll be our end of year thing. Okay. Mostly, right? Yeah. Like I said, there's a why lot. Don't we, why don't we make both the 11th and the 18th both joint? If we get, as we get closer, if we realize we don't need both joint, we can take, you know, give you guys the night off for one of those. But then at least we have the, there as the option. But I will tell you, May 14th is the only day to do KA improvement plans or handbooks. That seems early to me. Yeah. So. Sure. Then we could even, if both of those are joined, I mean, one of them we could, you know, the, the 11th we could carve out as, okay, we're going to do, jo cover joint things for the first hour and keep it short for these guys, and then we go into all the CPS handbooks or school program plans. Or maybe. I, don't know. I just think to Mary's point about better to have it on the calendar and know in advance that maybe we make them both joint for now. So we have a June 11th joint, and we're keeping the 25th joint? 18th. 
Um, the October 9th, the joint with the, is that the, so that's with the Concord FinCom? Yeah, that's the one. Is that one that they, so that's going to be like a pre-town meeting kind yeah, of Yeah, so thing. they're working on this. This was sort of to get a holding place there. Um, okay. They're working on a schedule simultaneously. So mm -hmm. I think we're going to be able to, there's a de definite effort to make our schedules work better than they did last year. So we're not tripping on each other's dates. So, so, we, so we'll have a meeting two weeks before that and two weeks after. But I guess October 9th, it's not, we should plan to meet with the FinCom and then like, I actually think they're going to work around that date. I think that might be when we need to bring you information in preparation for an income meeting. So, so this year it was um, on the 10th, and I think we met before it. Yeah, so I've been us. really stressing that I want to bring information to all of you before the Finance Committee right. sees it. So I think that will be what we talk about Thursday. Okay. Another question this year we held one in Boston. And we've talked yeah, about wanting to do that again next year. Um, I know we can't necessarily say right now, okay, this is going to be the day for Boston because we got to coordinate with other people to make that happen. But I would love the 23rd because I have to be in Boston that day. Okay. Oh, well, no, we we that, I, might not, I might not make it out here. I, I was actually going to say last, this past year we did it the second meeting in October. Perfect. And it worked well in terms of it. I'm just trying to make you happy there. Okay, so. What is the purpose of being in Boston? Matt Cohen. Um, just really to be more welcoming and accessible to our Boston families. Oh, I see. So do one oh, right. in Boston. So we also probably want to work with the new Metco director to see if that also right. works, right? To see if that makes sense. Because Aaron works. really ran that. Right. No, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Right. So, I, I mean, I don't think we should, you know, put it in pen here now, but at least last year when we were planning sure, when to do it, late October worked because of, you know, just Within all of the other schedules, it was it was a time that we didn't necessarily have to be here, but I just wanted to keep it on the radar as mm -hmm. something to look at. And I don't mean to, to throw at. a monkey wrench. My one thought: I almost wonder if it's a forum in Boston with those families because Instead, one of the challenges we had with planning the agenda was what could we sure. what could we do in Boston that we sh maybe wanted to be accessible to the Concord community for. So maybe it's a forum. I don't know. I almost wonder maybe. if we need to talk true, about it. because. When they are wanting to be accessible. Yeah, yeah, maybe it's something a little bit separate. Mm -hmm. A little right. bit different. Because it's true, the part that we did that was kind of town hall forum-esque of lots was, of people. Yeah. And it, as soon as we wrapped that up and went on to our meeting items, right, yeah. everybody yeah. left with, as they okay. you know, understandably right. would. So yeah, you're right. Maybe There's it's just a... To talk about. The, the, know, the going into Boston is really important. Right, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. a question yeah. of what it's we do there. Yeah. It's a good yeah. question. to this are that the some of the assignments were 11th meeting is joint and the a second June meeting is the 18th yes so we have, we have a motion for this calendar yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, oh sorry we're not voting on it oh, oh, one, one more thing sorry. yeah the, the, I think Heather at the July 24th meeting what time is that are we going to 6 30 oh could people do 5 o'clock do they want to do we want to Seems like nice we do it early in the summer. Yeah, mm -hmm. works for me. Yeah, my in-laws will be here. <laughs> yeah. Should we make it like 8 a.m. to 5 a.m.? Yeah, okay, great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so 5 o'clock. Hopefully they don't watch this on TV. No, they don't. They're English. They're, they're just in the last town. Oh, just point of note, we, Joanna and I talked a bit about the vacation stuff, and I'm going to try to manage differently, so I'm not spending my vacations prepping. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> we couldn't That's come right. with a solution. We still talked about so trying to move the yeah, so they they right so We couldn't solve it. We couldn't solve it. We're going to right. solve it from the other okay. side. Okay. 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 So we're going to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I'll try harder before I go on vacation. <laughs> okay. Work so. on that over the long weekend. <laughs> 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 nice. <laughs> so. It's 
still on the radar. We just couldn't solve it. Okay, we don't need to go into an, another update of the CCHS yeah. oh, marking, right? We'll, we'll, <laughs> no. we'll continue to action items. Action items, and uh, we've got a vote scheduled. Uh, I would entertain a motion uh, that the Congress School Committee vote to approve the CMS Wind Ensemble New York City performance trip on April 27th to the 29th with the condition that we receive a signed district liability insurance waiver from all participants. So moved. Second. Second. Question. Yes, any discussion? Yep. Would it uh, be typical that you get more detail on this trip before uh, they head to New York? Looks like things are pretty uh, inclusive at the present time. Would they normally spell out where they're going to be, where they're going to go? Closer to the date? Not to us. No, no. not to Lord. Or, or not. The itinerary itself, yeah. you mean? Um, a lot of, yeah, a lot we of certainly have that, there. but it mm -hmm. doesn't normally come to the committee. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm yeah. not suggesting you come here. Right. Just, does, the does school something. offices would maintain that. The principal really understands. Well, this is a pretty detailed itinerary. In New York? It looks like a bunch of choices and not a, sure. a lot of possibles. So, this I know this is concrete, but I'll accept. No, no, because the idea is we're giving them permission to finalize the trip. If we don't approve this, Thank they you. can't They can't get to that right. next step. Okay. So, I think the answer is yes. We're going to see more. Somebody or we might not, but, but there will be more. Yes. To see more to Right. Any other questions? Comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So next, uh, looking for a motion to vote uh, to approve the three-year contract for the Bus Drivers Association. So moved. Do we need more details on that? Or for no? both, right? For both. Okay. Committees. Second for both. <laughs> Any discussion? Just thank you for the time to negotiate that. Sure. Yeah. Good job. Thanks. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye for both. For both. Oh, um, all those in favor for confidence. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Next, uh, to vote on the uh, calendar we just discussed, uh, can I have a motion? I move to approve the calendar with the edits discussed, which were to add the start time of 5 o'clock to July 24th, to make June 11th joint, and to switch the last meeting from the 25th to June 18th, keeping it joint. For both, those were the, for both, those were the only edits, right? I move that for both things. Second. For both. Second for both, please. Any discussion? All those in favor for both? Aye. 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 No, no, all those in favor for the, for the region. You just, you just do them separately. Oh, okay. Do them separately. Okay. All those in favor for the region? Aye. 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 And all those in favor for Concord? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, so, Next uh, item is to vote on a request to pay for unused administrative vacation time. And this came about uh, because uh, totally unexpected factors uh, caused uh, the uh, leadership team to be without two key administrators for an extended period of time. And uh, looking at the uh, likelihood of many more uh, vacation days being taken by John Flaherty, we just felt that you know we needed to uh, provide more support uh, in the central office uh, by uh, bringing this to a vote. Uh, the, uh, so the request is a payment to be made up to 15 days uh, of a total of 23 vacation days that uh, John Flaherty still has. And this would uh, clearly help tremendously in terms of uh, keeping the, the office running smoothly. Um, and again, in view of the fact we have a new uh, director of finance and operations coming in, this would obviously improve that whole process. And um, uh, 
it, it just uh, operationally makes uh, perfect sense. Uh, Joanna, did you want to add something? No, I don't know. Lori wants to add anything? Yeah, I, the intention was that John would take all of these days. Um, way back when he announced he was leaving, that was the plan. Um, we have a number of just unpredictable things happen, so we were down two full-time administrators in the central office, and um, frankly, the thought of John leaving for this entire 23 days between the middle of May and June 30th um, was had me a little panic-stricken, so uh, I'm the last person who thought I'd be requesting that you pay anyone vacation days in this district, um, certainly not this spring. Uh, but I think if we can have some wiggle room to allow John to be here when we need him here and take as many of the days as he possibly can, it would allow us to keep the day-to-day -day functions um, operational and keep your superintendent safe. Yeah. <laughs> There's a personal <laughs> plea on this one. So. Um, and that that's the top priority of ours. Yeah, but there's money, you know, we, we've saved money because some of the unexpected changes had savings attached. Um, and this is a request for up to the 15 days, not necessarily even all 15, and they'll certainly use eight of the 23. So the goal is to just take the edge off and get us through to the end of the school. Thank you, John. Yeah, no, thank, thank you. Thank you for being willing. Do it. There was a day I closed the door and I'm crying, Uncle, how many days will you stay? <laughs> so, yeah. To me, this is I'm clearly. Help. <laughs> yeah. This is extenuating circumstances. It really is on end. Extraordinary circumstances. I could not see not giving you this support. Right. I, mean, we, yeah. I feel like we absolutely right. have to. And just for public no yeah. notice, I think we didn't replace any of these absences by bringing in long-term replacements. We've just been managing and grabbing more and more of, of this, the need of what needs to be done. So you could have been paying for long-term administrative coverage, at least you know in two different situations that we've just not even addressed. So. It's really a fairly fiscally conservative way to get through what's been extraordinarily unpredictable. So definitely. So those of you who remember, the, we have a policy as of last year. Correct. Correct. Yeah, that's the correct. school committee right. must approve correct. vacation payouts to administrators. Yeah. So the, the last, this, the cost associated is up to the 13000 Right. Depending on, depending on how many days. We, we thought yeah. phrasing it as a not to exceed 15 days would cap it and, and allow you guys to know what the numbers were. Yep, thank you. I, I think uh, there'll be much more than easing the load. Uh, rather, I think, John, you bring some, uh, some some knowledge and capacity that nobody else can bring um, to help us in the, the final weeks of the fiscal year. Um, I would uh, echo what Heather said, this is uh, an exceptional set of circumstances. Um, I think uh, thanks to you is in order. Um, and I think it's important the committee uh, express to the public that we don't want this misunderstood. I think, John, you'd be first to agree. The uh, people who uh, report to you have been extraordinary. The people who report to you, Lori, have been extraordinary. Office. Everybody's been uh, putting extra oars in the water lately. Absolutely. Uh, and yet uh, what we can do with this move is probably what we can't do in any other way to close out this year properly. Thank you. Well, well put. Well put. And the intention going forward is that we're all going to use our vacation time to right. have our, <laughs> our social, emotional well-being be as yeah. cared for as we <laughs> yes, want the kids. But yeah. this, so, this May and June, we I'll catch up. Yeah. <laughs> We're not too worried about that. Every single day. Don't rub it in. <laughs> well, I would move that um, both the Concord Carlisle School Committee and Concord School Committee approve uh, payment to Deputy Superintendent John Flaherty of up to 15 days of vacation time for this year in order to fill in the gaps that need to be filled. I move that for both of you. Second for public. Yeah. So for the regional school committee, uh, looking for a vote. I all in favor. Aye. All in favor. Aye. 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 And. Uh, for the Concord School Committee, all those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you so okay. much, John. No, John, thank, thank you all very much. Thank you, John. Thank you all. That's.
place of support. And thank you both for all that you've been doing to keep the, all the oars in the water and, mm -hmm. and, and keep the boat running smoothly, shorthanded. <laughs> much appreciated. <laughs> So can I um, vote that the Congress Carlos School Committee accept the donation and publicly thank the chair of the trustees of town donations for the donation of $1,200 to the high school in accordance with the 1878 bequest of Cyber Stowe. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> Very cool. I second. Annual, annual events. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so I'll entertain a motion for the Concord School Committee to vote to accept an anonymous donation to the Concord Middle School in the amount of $100. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Thanks to whoever it is. Thanks. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. And we have a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn, both committees. Second. Four. Vote. Very much. Okay. All those in favor of the Concord? Aye. Aye. All those for the region? Aye. Aye.